We have two new cycle sunspots that are giving us a show, and a solar storm was launched, but it looks like it's going to go west of Earth. Those stories are more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week is showing signs of life. As we switch to our Earth-facing sun, you can see a lot of prominence action on the east limb. You can see tornadoes in the north and fire plumes in the south. And we haven't seen activity like this in quite some time, which means our sun is definitely beginning to wake up. Now, we've also had some pr uh, prominence activity on the west limb as well. As a matter of fact, we even had a solar storm launch, but it looks like it's going a little bit west of Earth, so no chance for aurora there. However, we do have a small coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone here over the next couple days, and that could give us a burst of fast solar wind, which could bring aurora down to probably high latitudes over the next couple days or so. So there's a little bit of chance for your aurora photographers. Now, on top of that, we have even a bigger story. We have some bright regions that are rotating into Earth view. You can see, but they're both uh, solar cycle 25 bright regions. And as you look at the close up view, especially the one in the north, Look at all that activity. We can even see some coronal rain, which is stuff we haven't seen in quite some time. So it's a beautiful fireworks show. And even in the south, we're seeing those gorgeous fire plumes from these regions. Now, as they continue rotating into Earth view, we can tell that they're not going to be designated sunspots. They are only plage regions. So that means they are beginning to die out just a little bit. However, they are boosting the solar flux back into the marginal range for radio propagation. And this is good news for amateur radio operators and emergency responders. Switching to your M-flare threat meter, you can see the X-ray flux continues to be extremely low and therefore by proxy the solar flux continues to be low. As a matter of fact, right around the 11th and in through the next couple days, we were sitting at poor radio propagation on Earth's day side. But if you take a look closely, you can start seeing that solar flux rise right about the 15th and that was due to the new bright regions rotating into Earth view. Oh, I wish they had been sunspots, but they're not, which means they're probably going to continue to die off a little Little bit, but at least they've boosted the solar flux just a little bit, so we're back into the marginal range for radio propagation on Earth's day side. And even though you're seeing them kind of flatline and kind of top off, and be, maybe even be, the flux beginning to go back down a little bit, I am hoping it's going to hang on easily through the next week so you guys can enjoy a little bit better propagation. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see we've been pretty much stumbling and bumbling along anywhere between quiet conditions to unsettled conditions. We got a little bit of a bump up around the 11th and again around the 13th. These are from small pockets of fast solar wind, but they're really not that big and they're not really doing all that much. So it's giving a small boost of aurora uh, at high latitudes, but nothing at mid latitudes. And I hate to say it, but this is most likely going to continue. We might have a slightly bigger chance with this new uh, coronal that's rotating into the Earth strike zone over the next couple days, but there's a very good chance that the KP is still going to look exactly the way it looks now, just kind of it's sitting at unsettled conditions with the roar views only at high latitudes. Now, remember that solar storm I was talking about that was launched kind of west of Earth? Well, this is our solar storm prediction model, Enlil. This is NASA's version of the model. And here you're looking down at the sun from the North Pole. And you can see that solar storm being launched. And of course, it looks like it's launched pretty well west of Earth, so it's not going to hit us at all. If we do see an effect, it'll probably be late on the 18th and into the 19th. And this may mean that we'll get a little bit of enhancement of the fast solar wind that we already expect to see from the coronal hole that's sending us that fast solar wind. So aurora photographers at high latitudes, you might get a little bit of an extra show because of this. Most likely not, but I just wanted to show it to you anyway. But the nice thing is we are seeing more and more of these solar storms being launched and it looks like our sun is finally beginning to wake up. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun pretty much from the side. And when you take a look in Stereo's view, look at those bright regions. They stick out very strongly, don't they? It probably were sunspots on the sun's far side, but man, especially in the north, they've been firing off these little solar storms. And unfortunately, that has a tendency to kind of make them wear out a little bit. So now as they're rotating into Earth, 
of you, they're not nearly as strong as they used to be. So likely we're not going to see a whole lot from them in terms of flares or even maybe any solar storms coming from them. However, they are managing to boost that solar flux, which is going to keep amateur radio operators and emergency responders very, very happy. But they're not going to cause any radio blackouts. We, we don't have to worry about that, especially for you GPS users on Earth's day side. Everything is still pretty cool. Unfortunately, as we move past them, we don't see any other activity. So once these two regions rotate through the Earth-facing disk, it may be quiet again for some time. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the third quarter phase on our way to a new moon, with the new moon being on the 22nd. So you night sky watchers, now's a great time to catch those dim objects in the sky. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the fast solar wind from that coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone. Plus, we've got a little bit of a chance from an enhancement from that solar storm that's going to go west of Earth. So NOAA at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting unsettled conditions with up to about a 25% chance of a minor storm. And this should last over the next few days, possibly in close to the weekend before things taper off. Now at mid latitudes, we're not necessarily expecting quite so much, but we do expect unsettled conditions with up to about a 15% chance of active conditions, especially on the 19th and the 20th, and then things should begin to settle down after that. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, as much as I had hoped that these new cycle active regions were going to be sunspots, as they rotated into Earth view, it was clear they are not going to be so. Once again, we remain at a spotless sun and everything is in the green when it comes to big solar flares. We have no risk for radio blackouts or anything like that. So you GPS users on Earth's day side, you should be very happy. There's no problem with GPS reception. At least these bright regions, though, are boosting the solar flux. We are back up into the low 70s, which means marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side. However, as we move to the end of the week, we might start seeing a dip in that solar flux again as these regions continue to decay. So therefore, we could dip back into the poor range. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders enjoy the, the boost in propagation while you can get it. Now, also because we are at solar minimum, the cosmic ray flux is a bit higher than it normally would be, so you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, you are in the moderate range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers, so please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So space weather this week is definitely showing signs of life. We have a lot of prominence activity on the east limb of the sun, and it's stuff that we haven't seen in quite some time. So amateur astronomers, make sure you take a look with your telescopes. You could probably get some amazing views and amazing shots over the next few days. Now, aurora photographers, you also have a chance for some really good shots because we have a coronal hole that's rotating into the Earth's strike zone, and it's sending us some fast solar wind. And along with a solar storm that's going west of of Earth, it could bring us some gorgeous aurora views down to mid or high latitudes and possibly even down to mid latitudes for a short while. But if you're a mid latitude aurora photographer, make sure you take long exposures because the aurora could be probably pretty dim. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, we've got those two new bright regions that are rotating into Earth view, and although they're not sunspots, they're still boosting that solar flux up into the marginal range, and it could stay like that easily over the next few days before things begin to dip, so make sure you take advantage of that. And then also, you GPS users, well, we're not expecting any strong solar storms, and we're not expecting any big flares from these new bright regions, so GPS reception pretty much all over the globe should be top-notch. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.